NASCAR Wheeling Euro Series is back in Most for round eight of the season. The Czech Republic playing host to the NASCAR Pro and indeed Euro NASCAR 2 categories. It's Euro NASCAR 2 round eight that we focus on for now. The fans getting the opportunities as always to get up close and personal with the drivers who have had Let's say an interesting season so far. There have been dramas, there has been excitement. And of course, that excitement really reached a fee the pitch in round seven. Yesterday's race, the Saturday race at Most, was filled with drama. Thomas Pontinen trying to go around the outside of Vladimir Siortsis. He ended up going rally crossing. He'd already lost the front, uh, sorry, the rear end panel of his car as well. Uh, in the first lap of the race, it was Dubek versus Nasker in the front of the order and Nasca really made it look easy as he moved his way up into the lead. Fairly textbook stuff at turn one. However, that lead would come under contest time and time again as we had a multitude of safety car periods. One of which was caused by this incident for Michael Blakemolen into the arm coat, getting a tag from behind. Unfortunately, took uh, Kasper Svingulis with him as well. And uh, thankfully, the safety car period wasn't too long. The racing was back underway in short order. However, it was also relatively short-lived. Luli del Castello involved in that one. So was Miguel Gomez, unfortunately. We also saw the retirement of this man, Liam Hazemans, who had had some dramas in the early going, was working his way through the order nicely. Didn't need a non-score, though, in round seven of the season. Battle between Nasca and Dubek was once again at a fever pitch, but Nasca held off the defending Euro NASCAR 2 champion to take yet another win in his first race within Euro NASCAR at Most. Certainly, that highlight reel there only shows you a part of the drama that happened in race one of the weekend, round seven of the season. Round eight then has a lot to live up to in the eyes of the fans, I'm sure of that. Drivers readying up to take on at the Autodrom Most here in the Czech Republic, a 2.62 mile, 4.21 kilometer circuit that's played host to all manner of international racing competition over the years. A cloudy day, not the warmest of days, so hopefully not too searing and sizzling in the cockpit for the drivers. Sizzling pace, though, from this man, Alberto Nasca, our pole sitter after quali. This is the first time I do the pole position in race one for the race two, so <laughs> good. I was lucky yesterday because I was first. Nobody had the chance to do a good lap, so yeah, I mean, that's good. There you go, then, Alberto Nasca on the pole position, but he would face the challenge of his championship rivals, not least of which none other than Martin Dubek, the defending Euro NASCAR 2 champion who'd join him on the front row. Vladimir Osiortis and Ulis Del So uh, there on row two. Liam Hazemans all the way down on row number five. His difficult weekend in Most continues. Let's see if he can work his way up the order. It's Nasca and Dubek at the front of the order as they go to two by two formation for the start of the race. There go the green lights. We are racing and we are underway. And it is Nasca who will take the defensive inside line, of course, into turn one. He's got to try and stifle the attempt at Dubek going around the outside for turn two. Looks like he has done just that. No, Dubek can't quite get the nose up the inside of Nasca. Of course, Dubek got into Alan Day on Saturday within Euro NASCAR Pro. Nasca was surely wary to avoid a repeat of that incident. Dust kicked up, but seemingly everyone facing the right way and with the majority of their body panels still on the car uh, after the first couple of corners, which is more than can be said for most of our races here this weekend. It really is a pinch point, that chicane. Uh, turns one and two at the Autodrom Most. And there we see Alberto Nasca pressured by Martin Dubek, Vladimir Osiortis, and uh, then Ulis Del So rounding out the top four at the moment. Maltrek under pressure from Gil Linster. This for seventh place. Now, where is Liam Hazemans? He's there just behind them in ninth position. Uh, Thomas Pontinen in sixth place as well, but Maltrek and Lidster getting arguably too close for comfort there as they run into the first chicane as everyone made the corner. 
Looks like it. You hear the rumble of the small block V8 motor as Linster is now under pressure from Liam Hazemans. He's also now on the back of Paul Dufro because he has managed to find his way past into seventh place. And now immediately challenges for sick Gil Linster. On the move then for Cal Racing in the 56 car. Keep an eye on this scrap between him and Jufro. Jufro's had some interesting races so far this year. Just up the inside goes Linster at turn 20. Nicely done. But that being the 33 car. And at Cal Racing's 54. Ah, oh, Luli Del Castello again having a drama there. Of course, Paul Dufro in that 33 car, uh, as mentioned, the, uh, the the entry from Speedhouse. Got my wires crossed briefly there, but that is, in fact, the 33 car. We're under yellow flag conditions then. And we just got the green flag, but we got it after turns one and two. I think that was a measure to uh, maybe try and stop any further dramas. So maybe some wise stewarding there from the powers that be. It's a NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. They started the race on the run down to the far end of the circuit. Jabro in the 33 car with Liam Hazemans all over the back of him. This is now the battle for seven. Hazemans dives for seven. Has he got it? I think Jufro's still there. Oh, yeah, no, he definitely is. And uh, Jufro holds on to seventh for now, but Hazemans not giving up in the slightest. They run now under the bridge towards turn 20 eventually. There's a long way to go before they get there. I think Hazemans has finally done it there, going into turn one. Yes, it looks like he has. Mm, well, no, because Jufro is holding on with everything he has. This is a great little scrap. We've also got some good fighting for second place as Vladimir Osiotsis pressures Martin Dubek. All of this is allowing Alberto Nasca to build a slight advantage at the front of the order. How he would love to have two more wins on the board out of this weekend. There's the number eight car. This is Paolo Valeri. Now, what are we seeing here? Valeri, we ride on board with him. Oh, and that sounded like a bit of a tap from the back. Oh, no. Spin, oh, and a contact for Valeri. Now, I thought that was a whack from behind. I think it may have actually been the gears seizing or something like that. Certainly, the spin was most irregular. Ah, and they've created a hybrid NASCAR. The 65 car becoming rather attached there. Roberto Benedetti having some issues there with the eight. After the sheer number of safety cars yesterday, they've again taken the protocol of uh, starting after the first chicane. Green flag is out and the order has changed because as you saw there, Dubek has lost a position to the 23. Continent on the move then. And you see there the Gil Linster Alberto Nasca scrap is continuing in earnest. Dubek up the inside of Ponton and has he made it stick at turn 21? No, not quite. He's going to be careful now of Ulis Del So and indeed Vladimir Osiortis behind him. This is a great scrap for second place. It's a great opportunity for Alberto Nasca who continues to drive away uh, at the head of the order. He'll be hoping for no more particular dramas, at least none comprehensive enough to cause a safety car. Dubek tried to hassle Ponton and Ponton ends up rally crossing again. He did his fair share of that on Saturday. He's done more of it on Sunday. Holds on to third place for now, but now coming under increasing pressure from Siortis. Dubek is well clear of the finished driver in the 23 car. It's the Cypriot Vladimir Siortis then who is the next driver targeting the 23. You've also got Ulis Delso in the three car. Gil Lidster behind them in the 56. Then Liam Hazemans who would love a podium after a non-finish yesterday Today. And there you see Linster sneaking through for fifth place. I think he's done it there up against Ulis Del So. Yes, he has. And can Hazemans follow him? Yes, up into sixth place goes Liam Hazemans. He's been trying to get past Gil Linster pretty much from the word go today. 
it's proven to be very difficult, if not futile so far. Gil Lindster is putting on a great performance here at the sharp end of the order. Meanwhile, Nasca with Dubek still in his tracks comes out of turn 21. And across the line he comes to take the win. Nasca winning two from two. That championship lead is starting to look very, very comfortable. That was totally unexpected because the way we started was not good. I mean, the way we started the weekend was not good. We were not fast. We were struggling with the setup. But I think today's victory is a, a conjunction between the, the, the teamwork and my experience. Because, you know, uh, if this happened in the first race, I wouldn't have been able to win. Uh, but today I, I, I did it because I was able to overcome the problems of the car. So not all well with the car for Alberto Nasca, but all is very well indeed in the championship table for the driver of the 88. Alberto Nasca in the pound seat, not just in the overall, but also in the rookie trophy championship. Yevgen Sokolovsky leads the Legends Trophy at the moment and the Lady Trophy class currently with Alia Kolek. So that is our championship standings going into Zolder then. It is Alberto Nasca, surely the hot favourite for a Euro NASCAR 2 title in his first season. What can Dubek do to try and make it two in a row in Euro NASCAR 2? We'll have to wait and see. Join us next time.